Hi, Matt. I'm Valentina. I'm from Warner Channel, Brazil. How are you? Hi, today? how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank I'm you. How good. are you? Amazing. I just watched your movie yesterday. I still have goosebumps all over my body. I'm so glad. I Thank mean, you. Uh, Matt, let me jump right into this. I loved your vision of Gotham. And I know the movie was shot in several cities of the UK, Scotland, and Chicago. How yeah. the locations helped you find and create your Gotham? Well, I think that was one of the keys is that, you know, from the beginning, what we wanted to do was not have a Gotham that was recognizable as any one place. Like, you know, you don't yeah. want to do a version where you say, oh, I guess New York is Gotham or Chicago is Gotham or Pittsburgh is Gotham. So yeah. what we wanted to do was transport you to a city that looked like a, an East Coast city, but was one you'd never been to before. And in our searches, you know, when I was talking to James Chinlin, who's our amazing production designer, and I was talking to Dan Lemon, who was our incredible, I mean, both of them worked on the Apes movies with me. He, Dan is our yeah. VFX super. And I said, look, I want this to feel real, utterly real. And so, but I want it to be sort of um, a place we haven't been to before. And we started talking about the idea how important it was to have a base that was real. So we would mm -hmm. go to a city that wasn't a giant metropolis. Like one of the key places is Liverpool, right? And that has this Gothic architecture as the foundation. But then we could add through CG the, the sort of buildings that were sort of more modern, the things that had been grafted onto that. Mm -hmm. So that you were looking at it going like, well, where is this? So that you would look at uh, our Gotham Square and not say, well, that's Times Square. You'd say, or you wouldn't say it's Piccadilly. We didn't shoot it in London, right? It's like, okay, yeah. where did they shoot that? And so that was the goal was to try and take places where we could build on Gothic architecture and then take CG elements and add and design and flesh it out so that it felt like a space you'd never been before that felt utterly real, utterly Gothic, and yet you, you know, was fresh. I mean, the other thing I should say too is that some of what we did also was just the brilliant sets that James built, our back lot that we built in London where we had it plumbed with all wow. of this, you know, it's always raining in Gotham, but all of that stuff outside the Iceberg Lounge and all of that, they, that looks like it's shot right in the middle of some city with our extensions. It really was the craftsmanship of what the, the, um, the, the people did in London. They were incredible. Those sets were, <laughs> you closed the door and you were like, oh, I want to live in this house. What I loved about it the most is that the movie, it's a riddle itself, you know, kind of like for the audience. So how did you build that feeling for audiences to enjoy? Well, that was really the thing. You know, it's <laughs> it's interesting. Early on, I knew that I wanted to lean into the world's greatest detective aspect. I knew that I felt like that was the one thing. I wanted the movie to feel fresh. I wanted to approach it uh, in a story that hadn't been done in the movies because there are so many great Batman movies. And I wanted this one to be able to stand on its own and to be distinctive. And early on, as I started thinking about, you know, inspired really by the long Halloween, I started thinking about real life killers, you know, because I thought of this idea of leaving messages and ciphers. And I thought that sounds like the Riddler. And so this idea that somehow the Riddler could be leaving messages for the Batman, which would be very unsettling for Batman because Batman's meant to be anonymous. Why are you writing to me? His power comes from the fact that no one knows who he is. And so when this first version of the Riddler emerging in Gotham is leaving all these clues and Batman starts to unlock the riddle of why this city is so corrupt and why these people who are supposedly legitimate pillars of this place are not what they said they are, that that could be a story that in a way, without being an origin tale, could tell the origins of this place. And then I wanted that riddle to double back and become very personal and to become something that rocks Batman to his core and, and Bruce Wayne to his core because it was going to touch on his own origins in a way that he didn't expect. So that was the goal, to be a riddle. And that's it's cool that you saw it that way. Matt, the movie has amazing big scenes with a lot of effects, but it also has like a lot of intimate and smaller scenes. Yes. How do you find that balance to give the audience a little bit of everything. Well, that was the key to me, was that I wanted to make sure, of course it's a Batman movie, so you have to make it thrilling, there has to be the spectacle, but all yeah. of that has to be filtered through this idea of these characters. And I knew that what I wanted to do was to put Batman at the center of a very psychological story, and that I wanted his relationship with these characters, especially like with Selina Kyle, or even yeah. as he's having these scenes with the Riddler, that it would all be playing out in a kind of cat and mouse, very psychological um, sort of game. These they're playing out these kind of riddles and and these kind of puzzles. That all of it was needed to be intimate for you to connect to it. And I, I wanted it to be as intimate as it was spectacular. And so that was really the key. And that was really because I wanted the focus 
of the characters to be in the forefront of this, that this was the, the story of this corrupt city and the people in it. And so that balance was the part of the design from the very beginning. I knew that I wanted it to be a very personal story for these characters, and it was for all of us to do it. Actually, I read that you wrote this character inspired by Kurt Cobain, but also by Robert Pattinson. Is that true, actually? Well, no, I mean, it is, it's somewhat true. <laughs> I mean, obviously, the character is is Batman. He's based on the comic books. I mean, that's that's really what he is. Of course, he's that is the inspiration. I think for me, I guess what was interesting is when I was writing, I listened to music to get me into the mood. And when I was trying to think of a way to approach um, Bruce Wayne so that he could feel fresh, I knew that he had to be the iconic sort of the the member of the storied Wayne family. Um, but I was listening to uh, something in the way. It's the one that's in the trailer, uh, and the reason it's in the trailer is because it's in the movie. And there was something in that that unlocked something for me. I started thinking of this kind of like more of a recluse vibe of, of Bruce Wayne. You can have a different reaction to what happened to young Bruce Wayne, which is that I thought he could be like a member of the Kennedy family or like the royal family. And the idea that in the wake of that, he sort of re was retreating from this idea of being a Wayne and I started thinking of him in that way, like Kurt Cobain, as a bit of a kind of like recluse and a, and a little bit of a kind of having a rock edge. And somehow that, as I was writing, I started thinking of Rob because he has that kind of edge too. And I think there's, so in that sense, there's an essence, I guess, of Nirvana and Cobain in there, but the, he's not based on Kurt Cobain at all. He's just, there's a vibe in there that to me has a rock and roll edge, I guess, and a kind of, a kind of artist vibe. He's kind of like retreated into his old decaying Wayne Manor and he's got his, his amps and he jams in there, but the jamming he does is as Batman. I'm glad you actually told me this because you know, you read so many things on the internet. I'm yeah, glad it gets I, I get twisted. Confused. It's not exactly what I meant. He's not based on Kurt Cobain, of course not, but there's an <laughs> essence, there's an essence, there's a tone. I would say what it is, it really has to to do with the tone. There's something about their Nirvana music that feel that felt very right for this kind of this year two Batman tone. You did it, and I hope you have a vacation after this. Oh, because thank you. I heard from the cast that you worked a lot, so you deserve it. True. <laughs> thank you so much. You're part of this too. How am I part of this? You'll see.